Hi, I'm Connor. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, blah, 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 blah. You know the drill. Uh, although I do want to say thank you to everyone who's been uh, commenting and, and watching so far. I've been getting some nice comments, which I, which I really appreciate. Thank you. So this is my review of the movie Ambulance. Right out of the gate, I want to say I like this movie. Um, I like it a lot. It's not perfect, obviously, but this is going to be a positive review, and I, and I recommend watching it. So if you saw the title of this video, you might be thinking, a Michael Bay popcorn movie, as opposed to what? A round circle? Wet water? <laughs> a long Lord of the Rings movie? A racist critical drinker review? I know, the only kind of movies that Michael Bay makes are popcorn movies. So I actually like to think of uh, popcorn movies a little bit different than, than everyone else. I have this definition here, a motion picture without serious dramatic content, a weighty message, or intellectual depth which serves simply as enjoyable entertainment. So technically, yes, all of his movies are popcorn movies. There's definitely no weighty message ever, <laughs> or intellectual depth, <laughs> or dramatic content. I, I sometimes there's dramatic content, but, but they're, they're definitely all popcorn movies, right? But for me, the way I separate it is, there's a difference between big movies and popcorn movies. Big movies are like the Transformers uh, series, which Michael Bay directed. A big movie would be like Pearl Harbor or Armageddon. And what separates them for me is big movies are usually like restricted by lore or a story um, that, are, that already exists uh, that the movie has to be consistent with. And so they usually have really high expectations, which is different to me than a popcorn movie because for a popcorn movie, you, you don't expect anything of them. They're, they're just supposed to be fun. Like for example, Star Wars. Star Wars can't just be lightsaber fights and, and space battles. It's something that took Disney three movies to not learn. There's characters there in a story that, that already exists that people really care about. And so you have to be respectful of that and you have to be consistent with it. And so even though technically, yes, Star Wars would fall into the category of popcorn movie, to me, it's very different because you go into it with those expectations. With a popcorn movie, you're just going into it expecting to have fun. And that's exactly what Ambulance is. And so now before we get into the, my review, I wanna go over the production of this movie a little bit because I think it's, it's relevant. So we're just gonna read this from Wikipedia. To make the film feel authentic, the cast was allowed to improvise some of their lines. The production also hired real trauma surgeons, firefighters, SWAT teams, snipers, and 52 LAPD officers for the shoot. The helicopter chase sequence in the LA River was not in the script. Bay came up with the idea after two helicopters became available for use. And I love how Michael Bay takes the opportunity to sell himself as opposed to the movie. He's just straight up bragging about his own... <laughs> He's just he's just straight up bragging about himself. Elaborating on the film process, he said they shot, quote, 90 shots to 120 shots a day. That's a lot of shots. Most movies are 20 to 30 shots a day. But you know, I was there with the camera. I'm a director who doesn't have a video village. I don't have a director's chair. I don't have a trailer. I'm right there with the actors and we work fast. It's like, wow, nice. That's really impressive, Michael Bay. Good for you. So anyways, I had already read this before watching the movie, and so I knew that some of the cops were going to be real, and that some of them had lines. Um, and so I just wanted to say that if you're like me, and you can't help but bring a little bit of politics into it, and you're thinking, oh my god, of course they paid the cops to be in this movie. Like, like the cops are doing everything except for helping people these days. And this movie's just going to be a bunch of copaganda. It's going to be biased towards the police. But I want to say that if you're worried about that, then the movie definitely doesn't do that. The movie is not biased. I'd say it's pretty realistic. I'm not spoiling anything, and this is this is a spoiler-free review. But the cops definitely make some like pretty dumbass mistakes in this movie. It's almost like unrealistic, honestly. But they don't show them in a negative way. They don't show them in a positive way. They're just part of the movie, and it's not biased at all, uh, which I really appreciated. So anyways, the plot is that there's these two adoptive brothers, Danny and Will. Danny is played by Jake Gyllenhaal, and Will is played by Yahya Abdul-Mateen II. And Will is a former military veteran. I, I, I don't know what branch. Um, but his wife has, like, some health problem uh, that isn't covered by insurance. So they have to pay for it out of pocket. And it's, like, 200 grand or something. So, so Will needs this money for his family. He goes to Danny, and Danny's like, you know, I don't have the money right now, but I'm about to go rob this bank. So if you want to help me, then you can have, you know, you, you, you can have more than enough to cover the surgery. So they go to the heist, but it goes wrong. And they end up having to hijack an ambulance from, from these two EMTs. But the ambulance has a cop in the back who was shot. And then one of the EMTs stays on board to, to keep the cop alive. And so it sets up this premise where the police can't just shoot at the ambulance or, or do a pit maneuver, you know, or ram it or, or take it out because there's a cop in there. Uh, and so they have to keep the cop, you know, they can't risk the cop's safety. So that's basically what allows the movie to happen. Because otherwise, you know, they could just shoot it right away and the movie would be 20 minutes long. So the whole movie is the two brothers trying to evade the police and the EMT is in the back trying to keep that cop alive. Now the acting was, now the acting was very good. I liked it a lot. Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal does a really good job. Um, he was my favorite part of the movie. He's so funny. He has a lot of lines. And he's, he's also like very manic and just crazy and insane. And he has a lot of really funny lines. And I don't know which ones were improvised. I couldn't tell. 
Um, but there's there are like a good three or four or like five times where I laughed really hard at what he was saying. And then Yahya Abdul Mateen II, uh, he plays Will. He he's his character is like the emotional foundation for the movie. He does just as good. Um, he, he's not quite as funny because his character isn't funny. Um, but Yahya does an amazing job. And then the EMT is played by this woman Aiza Gonzalez, who I've never heard of before. But it says she was in Baby Driver and Hobbs and Shaw. And Godzilla vs. Kong, okay, interesting. But she's like the standout of the movie. She, she really shines in this movie. She does great. And Michael Bay was very smart to dedicate a lot of screen time to her face. So those are like the three main characters, and their acting is rock solid. And then the rest of the acting is fine. There's like this one like FBI expert, you know, analyst guy. He's like the super detective, and he shows up partway through the movie. You'll know him when you see him. He didn't really do it for me. I don't know who that actor is, but he didn't really sell it for me. Um, other than that, everyone else is great. There is a female cop who's like, uh, she's like the mobile command center leader, I guess. And I, she had to have been an actor. There's no way that was a real police officer because she like did such a good job. And she's so funny. Like every single line of hers is hilarious. So, so I really don't think that was a cop. I intentionally didn't look it up before this review because I wanted to like be honest about my take, take on it. Um, and I'm not going to look it up now. I'm not going to put it in the review because I don't want you to know either. Um, but she definitely stands out as, as well. She's really funny. And as for the story, the story is pretty straightforward. <laughs> like I said, there's really not much to it. It really is just a two-hour car chase. Um, but the ending is satisfying. The story, you know, the story did what it needed to do. It unfolds and resolves well. As for action and the effects, um, they are awesome. Surprisingly for a Michael Bay movie, they're, they're the best part of the movie. I only noticed one single shot with CGI in it. Pretty sure the whole entire rest of the movie is done practically. And it's actually particularly impressive for only a $40 million budget. And I think it's a testament to Michael Bay's experience and his ability that he's able to pack in so much action and so much realistic action into the movie at such a low budget. And, and I love going into it knowing that the helicopter scene was was uh, was improvised, or not improvised, but you know, it was kind of like decided to be included on the spot basically. And you, you can kind of tell that it's like that. You can kind of tell that it wasn't really planned or, or prepared for very well. Um, but but it's good. It's definitely fun. It's pretty cool. They've used that setting in so many movies now. It's probably most famous in Terminator 2. Uh, and it's most memorable to me in Drive, starring Ryan Gosling. Um, but that's just because it's my favorite movie. And it's pretty much always done well, like whenever they use that set in, in a movie. They do, a, they do a good job. And Ambulance is no different. It's not the best scene in the LA River that you've ever seen. And honestly, it's not even the best one with a helicopter <laughs> that you've ever seen. But it's definitely cool and fun and, 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 and like exciting and entertaining. And overall, the action is great. There are so many scenes where there's just an insane amount of cop cars just flying everywhere, which is so unrealistic in, in, a, in a great way, in the best way. And there's all these explosions that would never happen in real life, uh, which we love. And like I said, having the cops be real in the movie, it definitely added a layer of like authenticity, uh, which I love. Actually, it, it kind of felt like it, it removed a layer. It felt like I was like more closer to the movie and like we're connecting to it more. This is like real life. Which is which was really cool. It worked out really well. So yeah, for a movie where the main focus is a car chase, and if you if you can just imagine what would a movie be like if it was a Michael Bay movie, and it's just a two hour police chase, this is exactly what it's like. This movie is exactly what it's like in in, in the best way. And so now I'm gonna go over three things that I thought could have been a little better about the movie. Um, first, right out of the gate, the movie is way too long. You already saw that coming. I think it's like two hours long or something. Two hours and fifteen minutes long. This could have definitely been an hour and a half, hour and forty minutes easily especially in act three i saw this in a couple other reviews um there's like this section of act three that is kind of introduced like out of nowhere it's not like completely separate from the rest of the movie um but they didn't really set it up very well beforehand and then the chase kind of continues on and it's almost like realistic in a sense because the movie kind of drags on i don't think the realism was intentional um, but it's almost like if you were actually in a two-hour car chase like in real life it would be tiring after a while. Like you would be exhausted by the end. It wouldn't be fun. You wouldn't be like pumped over when it was over. You'd be like, oh my God, when's this gonna end? Like, I'm so tired of driving away from the cops. And this movie kind of <laughs> almost kind of makes it feel like that by the end of it, which is kind of funny. But I really think that Michael Bay's thought process is he wants to give you as much value as possible. You know, show as many explosions, as many cop cars, crashing and jumping and rolling and flying. I mean, maybe I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt for no reason, but I really think that's what his thought process is and I really appreciate it. And then the second part is sort of related to the first part. The, the pacing of the whole heist sequence is a little off, but like the time in between when the robbery is over to when they're in the ambulance feels really, really long and like drawn out. 
And there's, I feel like there was a ton of that that wasn't necessary. And then the robbery itself was really short. If they had cut five minutes from in between when the robbery is over and then when they're in the ambulance and then added five more minutes of showing how the robbery takes place, I feel like that would have made the first act a lot more fluid and like it makes sense. Even though I get that the point of the movie is not, it's not, it's not a robbery movie, it's, it's not a bank robbery movie, it's a chase movie. It, it was getting to the point where I was like, okay, come on, let's just get, let's just get to the ambulance. Like, I know they're gonna end up there. It's the title of the movie, <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's, let's get the show on the road. But yeah, those aren't really that serious. For me, the main problem with the movie was, um, there's a scene at the beginning of the movie and it shows Will, he's on the phone with the insurance companies. And it's the scene where the audience learns that Will needs to get the money for his wife's surgery by himself. We're learning that the insurance will not cover it. And it's supposed to set up the emotional stakes for the movie because it, all of the emotional conflict is derived from Will's struggle, you know, with doing something he knows is wrong and illegal um, but it's for his wife and his family. And it's objectively unfair that he can't afford the surgery. And so the audience is allowed to feel justified in supporting this character, even though he's breaking the law. And it's a pretty simple movie, right? It's basically a two hour car chase. So establishing the emotional stakes effectively is really make or break for this kind of movie. And this scene basically fails at that. What they do is they show up on the phone with the insurance company, but then they cut to him standing far away from the camera, or they'll cut to like the bills and the, you know, the insurance paperwork. And then they cut to his wife and then they cut to the baby. You know, the, the wife is holding the baby. And while all of that imagery, you know, is important to communicate, to visually communicate Will's situation, it totally ignores the only source of emotion in the movie, which is the main character's face. And so if they had just like held steady on his face and let Yahya Abdul-Mateen express all of the, the frustration, the anger, the anxiety, the stress, not, not the anger necessarily, but, but his motivation, right? It doesn't give Yahya time to establish his character's motivation for why he makes the decisions he makes for the rest of the movie and for why he reacts the way he does to the consequences of his decisions for the whole rest of the movie. And it's weird because I know that Yahya Abdul-Mateen can do that. Like, I know he can handle that level of acting. It's not really that complex, you know, like to show frustration and stress. Um, I've seen him in other stuff. I loved him in Watchmen. Um, he's the bad guy in Aquaman, that's right. Which Aquaman isn't that demanding acting wise. But obviously like I know the guy can act, right? And it's a shame because probably the most accurate part of this movie is tragically, a United States military veteran can't afford healthcare for his family, which is just, which is just heartbreaking. And it's a shame that the movie almost wasted that because that, that would be so real, it's so believable, it's so, you know, so relatable. It's like the perfect premise for the emotional engine of a story because it's so believable. And so it's, it really is a shame that they wasted that because the audience would have felt so much more connected to Will and to his conflict. We would have felt so much more involved um, because you know while we feel morally justified with what he's doing, he's doing it for his family, he is risking so much, not just his physical safety in his life, but his future and his family's future. Because if he gets caught, you know, it's over. It's over for him, it's over for his family, he's, he's going to jail. And it's funny, because here I am explaining why a Michael Bay movie doesn't have an emotional foundation and like why the characters in a Michael Bay movie don't have emotional drive, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it would have made all the difference in the movie. It probably would have added like 10% to the Rotten Tomatoes score, honestly, especially because it's the first scene. And I have in my notes here, I forgot to say this earlier, but Michael Bay references his own movies in the film. I won't say which ones they are, but it's like, it's just so funny that he references his own movies. Like there's, there's, it happens multiple times. And I don't know, but I, and I noticed them right away. And I was like, oh my God, that's so, that's so funny. I don't know why, but that guy's just so crazy. So with that said, I like this movie a lot. And if you're like me, you know, I've been dying to see a regular old action movie in theaters. It's been like two years now or two and a half years. Uh, so this movie would be perfect for you. The way I'll summarize it is if you love going to the movies just for the sake of going to the movies, then this is perfect for you, especially on the big screen. I mean, it really is just two straight hours of car chase unrealistic explosions, cop cars blowing up and flying everywhere, people yelling and shooting and shouting and fighting. But if you're the kind of person who you're a little more selective with what you go see in theaters, like maybe you only go for big movies, like the last movie you saw was The Batman or, or Spider-Man No My Home, then I could definitely see how, you, how you'd want to wait for this one to come out on, on, on whatever, Netflix, whatever. Um, I, this is definitely could be one of those movies, especially because like, like I said, towards the end, you might want to start skipping a little bit. But either way, if you have the time, I recommend watching it. And if you go see it in theaters, Michael Bay definitely gives you your money's worth. Um, so I recommend this movie. All right, thank you so much for watching my review. I hope you liked it. I'm gonna go over some fun facts now. So that was the review, the review's over. Um, you don't have to watch the fun facts if you don't want to, but I'm a huge movie nerd. So I looked up a bunch of stuff about Michael Bay's filmography and I'm just gonna go over them now. Um, but anyway, I hope you liked the review. 
um, feel free to like and feel free to subscribe. I think I have now, yeah, 29 subscribers. So, I mean, I'm laughing, but it really does mean a lot. So, thank you guys. Thank you to everyone who's been subscribing and commenting. I really appreciate it. Okay, time for some fun facts. So, if you're a movie nerd like me, then you'll think this is pretty cool. Uh, Michael Bay has directed 15 movies from 1995 until 2022. I have this little chart here that I made. This is the movies, this is the budget, and this is this is in millions, by the way. Here's the box office, and here's Rotten Tomato score. He's actually, out of all 15 movies, he's only ever directed five that had a budget below $100 million. And then technically The Rock, which was made in 1996, its budget was $75 million back then, but, but after inflation today, the budget would be 135 almost $136 million. So technically, he's only directed four movies that costed less than $100 million, which is just crazy. Bad Boys, which is his first movie, Pain and Gain in 2013, 13 Hours, which costed $50 million, and then Ambulance, which costed $40 million. And I was thinking like, there's probably a joke in here about how even though his, his net worth is like 500 million or something crazy, his movies have grossed a total of $6.5 billion. This is the total of his box office here, 6481. That's $6,481 million. And so I was thinking there's a joke about capitalism, like even though it's worth so much money, like he's generated this much money for, for big companies. So, you know, he should be getting paid more. And I was thinking like, I don't know if that'd be funny or not. But anyways, his movies have made six, almost $6.5 billion, which is crazy. And the next fun fact is that <laughs> I, had, I did not know this, but Ambulance, which at 68% is his highest rated movie, is, is tied with The Rock, which came out in 96. And every single movie has a lower Rotten Tomatoes score. And I always knew that his movies like weren't received very well, were received poorly, um, but I had no idea that they were like all panned. This is so funny. The lowest was Transformers 5, Transformers The Last Night, which by the way, I had no idea that there was a fifth Transformers movie. Um, the fourth and fifth one came out when I was in college. Yeah, 2014. And I wasn't really in touch with movies uh, back then when I was in college. So I, I must have missed these. I watched a ton of movies when I was in middle school and high school, like with my dad and with my friends. I was like, we, we went to the movies all the time. But then in college, I was into like other things. You know what I mean? Anyways, Transformers The Last Night got a 15% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is just so bad. I mean, that's like so bad. But the fourth one, Transformers Age of Extinction, I think I actually have seen this one. I guess I could go check my ticket stubs. Uh, but 17%, I mean, that is just so low. That's, <laughs> that's so funny. I love how his first movie, right out of the gate, gets 42%, and then they immediately start giving him huge budget movies, like for 20 years straight. Anyways, I thought you might appreciate that. Thanks for sticking around. If you like the video, feel free to like and subscribe. And I want to say thank you to the people who commented on my last video, which was like when I, I tried to review the movie with no script and I just like was rambling and I didn't, I actually didn't even say like what the title of the movie was at the beginning. I just started talking about it. Um, but these two people, Ice Bear and Jacob Berry, uh, I love your videos, keep coming, man. And then this review is really cool. Don't be so hard on yourself. Really appreciate it, guys. Thank you. This is so fun. Anyways, thank you. See you next time.